In a previous video I showed you a battery spot welder that we purchased. I assembled and tested and it didn't work out very well. So now we've ordered a another type. That's it here. So we have the usual leads. Here's the connection and there's a little buzzer in this one unlike the other one. Well, let's just take it out. And this is a totally portable one. LiPo. Let's assemble it and test it. Now what you see before you is what came in the box. And there was no instruction. But it seems straightforward enough. There's only one bit of soldering to do. That's just to put the buzzer on onto the board and the positive lead goes on to the end here on the positive bolt or where it connects to the LiPo battery. The negative goes here and again it bolts on with the nut and bolt supplied. Now if you look at the gap between the LiPo battery and the board. There's nothing there. Now when you put the buzzer on it's going to stick out ever so slightly so we're going to have to do something with that. Comes with a micro USB cable, USB to micro USB which goes into the charge port here. It has an on off button and that's it. It's claimed that it's 5000 milliamp with a 70C discharge and it's estimated 300 amps. Now 70C with 5000 milliamps would equal 350 amps. So 300 amps would be within the tolerance. Now the tools you'll need for this would be a size 8 for the nut and a size 3 allen key to undo them and to put on the negative and of course soldering iron and a bit of solder so let's get to it before I take the board off what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make sure that we can see which is the positive and which is the negative so the positive he is here and the negative is over here. Don't want to turn the board in or put the board back on the wrong way now do we? Now another thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to mark down along the board or along the, the edge of the board on the battery itself so when it goes back into place what I'm going to do is I'm going to put an insulator between the board and the battery itself so there'll be no chance of any shorting or other incidents. Next now we'll just put the little size 8 underneath and undo this. Hmm. You can see there's nothing there so when the buzzer goes in it's going to stick out a tiny bit and if you understand Chinese then you're fine. Let's have a look at the board on it if you can just see it says positive for the buzzer and on the buzzer itself it shows you which is positive. Positive being generally the longer leg on the pins. So we, have, we can see it there. We'll just solder that into place. It's 
just give it a moment to cool and then just clip off the excess as much as you can. And as you can see there'll still be a little bit more proud if you can just try and get a little bit more off it. Yep, that's as much as it'll come. It also says remove the little sticker. And now we'll get on to the next piece. Which is fitting the negative. Right, as tight as you possibly can without damaging the board itself. Yeah. And next stage now is to fit this all back onto the battery itself. Now you remember the lines I drew here because that's where the board is going to sit and making sure that your positive here is going over here. So what I do is I'm going to use some insulating tape and some heat resistant tape. So we'll just run that a little bit along there. followed by a little bit of insulating tape. Now I don't want to use, I could have used two-sided tape, but I don't want to stick the board permanently to the battery in case I have to remove it again. So now on the back of the board, I'm going to apply some more tape. And I reckon that should help. Now turning it back around again and again making sure that your positive goes onto the positive end. We we'll reap that. And that's it. Simple as that. Now with the little probes or little sticks. They come with a heat shrink sleeving. So what you can do then is you can just apply a little bit of heat and be able to shrink them down into size. Now let's put it on charge. And I'm getting a green light which tells me that it seems to be charged. Now, you notice when I put it back on first, the, it powered up. The little blue light came on. But if you're working with the probes as I was, and you definitely don't want them to touch each other, you want to switch it off. So in order to switch it off, you hold the button down for about two to three seconds, and it should switch off. or not. Well, we'll do a five seconds. Five seconds seems to have done the trick. It's now switched off. So it's telling me it's fully charged. So what we'll do now is we will test it. 
using an old battery that I removed from a power pack from a drill and let's just see how this works switch it on let's hold down one and then press the other and it does the job now there's no trigger on it it automatically does it and I'm pulling quite a lot there now it certainly does work now I don't know how long the batteries will last or how many batteries you'll be able to spot weld but you'll be able to do as many as you possibly can hope you enjoy this give the thumbs up if you did if you have any questions don't hesitate to ask and you'll find us on the usual social media platforms. Don't forget to like and share. And of course subscribe.